Evening folks, hello, happy new year to you. Yes, me and him are here, look. No, that I'm, hello. I was just doing that, that way round. That way, him, that way. Him, this dibbly chappy. Hello <laughs> chat, who we got in there tonight? Graham's in, VB, Yoda dude, Jersey Dave, Vape, Liana, happy birthday. Hi Fly Stud, Pete Collins, DTR, Davey, Dream Vape, Sav, Monster of Trev. Dibbly's in there, Jessica, mm -hmm. Fuzzy. Dave, Neil, Neil, Bob, and me. That's me, me, but I'm not logged in. Um, so, uh, yes, I hope you're all well. Is everyone getting everything? Because uh, I don't know yet. Yeah, we're looking good as far as I can see. Yes, oh, good. We've got about a minute and 20 seconds till 9 o'clock. Yes, so today we're looking at the uh, RDNA 40 which is nice. Yes, very nice. And um, I forgot what you're looking at. What are you looking at this week, Mr. Dibbs? Oh, I know, uh, yes, that little yeah. little um, finagly mod. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a cheap mod. Um, so all that is coming up. Don't forget you can um, tweet us at hashtag Vapersoon. Uh, and your tweets will go up on the screen, um, should they be um, legally acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go back there. Um, yes. Who's 92 today? He's like... Dave. I think it's Lau. It's not Lau. It's Lau's birthday. Lau Lau's birthday. Be, no. Behave. Bless her. Be nice. Be nice to Lau. It's her birthday. Be nice to her tonight, please. Yeah. Um... Yes, so there you go. Um, and we've got a little bit of news. You've probably heard it already, but uh, you know, the Dibbers and I are going to muse over that bit of news. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we in sync? That's the question. That is a big question. Are we in sync? If we're not in sync, then I'm going to go outside and hit myself over the head with a, a fish. Um, and everyone in no. the chat goes, No, you're not in sync. Right, it's nine o'clock. Uh, so um, <laughs> let's. Um, Let's do a bit of this. Hold on a minute. I'm going to cough, but I'll cough when I do the sting. Ah, oh dear. Good evening. Good evening. It's um, just gone nine o'clock on Tuesday, the 6th of January, 2015. Yes, it is upon us, 2015. Where has, I don't know, the last 47 years of my life gone? I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. And next month is my third vaping anniversary. So uh, I wonder if it's on one of, uh, on the day of our show. I don't know. Anyway, um, I was busy looking at chat there. So good evening again, chat. Um, I'm here as usual with um, this man. Hello. Again, that man, Hello. watch hand. It's the watch hand. Mr. Gary Dibley, uh, for your delight, delectation, and vaping amusement. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but all of that has to be after what we like to call the titles. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health E Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids.
Yes, good evening again, uh, and welcome to this week's Vapor Scene with myself and Mr. Dibley. Um, just uh, looking at some uh, some tweets that came by there, and um, Phoebe has just uh, tweeted this. Back from the seasonal sky, oops, holiday I mean. Can we join in some live Vapor Child TV Vapor <coughs> Scene? Yes, thank you, Phoebe. Um, yes, yesterday was my first day back at work, I have to say, and it was a bit of a bind to put the old alarm clock on or on my phone anyway, on Sunday night, um, having been used to uh, two weeks of not having to bother, really. Um, but there you go. It all starts here, and it's, what's next? Easter's next, yeah. That'll be fun. What do you say, Mr D? Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely uh, an interesting one. I was working over most of it, but um, I had the two like, nice little four-day breaks, and uh, and I'm sort of thinking today, surely we should finish tomorrow. Um, it's, it's been hard. It's been bloody hard. Um, but yeah, getting back gradually into the swing. I feel absolutely knackered tonight. Though. That's all. I had to wake myself up to uh, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very glad that you managed to join us. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> I must say, there's days when I set everything up and then I go into the lounge and have a cup of uh, cup of coffee or something and watch a bit of telly. And I could feel myself kind of dozing a bit. I thought, oh no, I can't fall asleep because if I do. I might not be awake for the show. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yes. Anyway, on with some news. Uh, and this appeared uh, kind of late, 24th December, so uh, just before Christmas. Um, and three adverts got banned by the ASA. Um, and I have to say, I'm just so disappointed in the ASA for doing this. Uh, and it's basically the, uh, the two VIP ads um, and also the one for kick where the guy talks about his favourite flavour being cherry and someone saying yes at the moment and they're all nice and in a little restaurant and you know it was quite a nice ad um, but apparently they had 199 complaints including some yeah I bet most of them were from organisations such as ASH the Association of Directors of Public Health and the British Medical Association um, they argued that the advert stated the product was an e-cigarette, which they said made it clear that no tobacco is being promoted. I mean, come on. Because the ads presented it as a central focus of the ads in a sultry and glamorous way, we considered that they indirectly promoted the use of tobacco products. Now, didn't they get a look at the adverts first? Isn't that what the ASA is all about? Don't they have to approve adverts? Um, go back to the next page. Um, they, they call it an irresponsible advert. So in a separate ruling, the ASA banned a vape nation advert for encouraging ex-smokers to use e-cigarettes. This is the, the clip that, from Kick, um, where they're talking about the flavour. Um, and they received seven complaints from viewers who argued the advert would encourage non-smokers, and particularly former smokers, to use them. Well, if someone had given up and was on the cusp of going back, I'd much rather they went and got a kick than got a 20 fags. I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? What do you think, Mr. D? Yeah, it does. It's, um, I can't swear, can I? Um, it, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, uh, it's bonkers. I mean, I, I see, I can't remember which one it was, but I was watching uh, TV last night and um, one popped up, um, an Easter guy. And I think they're, they're well, my my interpretation of the ads that I'm seeing at the moment, A, they're bloody boring. Um, and and B, you know, I, I think they're, they're they're probably so far with their backs against the wall in terms of what they can do. It's hard to to make them interesting, and I suppose in making them interesting, making them appealing, and this and the other. But surely that's the point of advertising something. If you're advertising something, you want to make it uh, appealing to a to a certain audience, and this and the other. Not every advert out there is you know, is appealing to everybody. I don't buy Tampax, but I have to endure adverts of some woman talking about a special doofy what's it that makes her feel comfortable once a month. <laughs> I don't, I'm not interested in that, but I don't complain about it. Um, you know, th and th all sorts, aren't they? You know, but I, th I think the ads that are out there to me, they're boring. Um, they're getting a point across, which which is good, um, but they need to, they need to lax up a bit on, on what can be done. And I'm sure you know, in the, in the coming sort of months and years, the ads will come to a point where they are a little bit more interesting than they are at this moment in time. 
Yeah. That's my, my personal point of view yeah. on it anyway. Dave's just um, put in our Skype and he said it's clear cast to prove adverts, not the ASA. So the ASA will uphold any complaints. Um, I particularly find some of the anti-smoking adverts quite distasteful. They're supposed to be distasteful, um, but why, as a non-smoker, do I have to endure those? Um, there's plenty of ads that are pretty objectionable. Um, so, you know, these ads were after the watershed, first of all. So you can do all sorts of things after the watershed that you can't do before. You can be sultry and everything else. Uh, it's basically, it's the naysayers of one over uh, and we need to make sure that they don't keep winning over. Um, yeah, I think, thing. you know, you know, the one that the, um, the ad that this, the, they, they relaunched again um, this year that was on, it was on last year as well. The one of the bloke with a fag that then starts mutating. Um, yeah. I, most of the people that, that I've been talking to who have watched that, them and their family, as soon as it comes on, they turn it over. So, it, you know, it, it just turned over because they find it disgusting, not about the guy smoking, about the bulging stuff coming out the side of it, mm -hmm. which I know has a message, but I think most people are, are just going, it's bloody disgusting. Turn it over and, and the message is gone, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, VB has just tweeted, let me go, to, a reason seldom has anything to do with responses to SIG adverts, though. Yes, I agree with that, VB. Yeah. I really do. Um, I think there are a lot of objectionable, objectionable adverts out there, and maybe we should start picking one. You know, we did the Twitter bombs. Maybe we should start picking an advert and complaining about it en masse and see how many complaints it takes to get one of those down. Mm. But it wouldn't happen, would it? They'd just say, oh, well, they're just saying that because they want to cause a problem. Um, so it, we're kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't type thing. But I hope that those adverts, in some form, return for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, what else have we got? Yes, there was this one that I saw in the International Business Times. And to do with e-cigarette sales, soared in 2014 to become the UK's fastest growing supermarket product. Um, sales of e-cigs jumped by 49.5% in the last 12 months. So 17.3 million of the devices were sold. So given that fact, given that fact, and without lots of national TV advertising, what do you think about that? I'm on you, Gary. Oh, I, sorry, I thought you were <laughs> talking, talking to the masses. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It's, I've, never been, I've never been in a, in a supermarket and actually see anybody pick one up. Uh, <laughs> I've stood there waiting. Yeah. While the wife's doing her usual stuff and, and ogling bread or whatever she does when she goes to St. Chris. Um, yeah, I've, I've stood just to get to see if anybody, and I've, I've spoke to some of the people. I mean, it must be true, obviously, but um, I've never seen anybody pick one out. I've heard of people getting them, but for the quantities that they're selling, I've, I've never never witnessed. And I've stood there for sort of the best part of 30 minutes just waiting for a, a prescription once and um, never never seen anybody even give them a second look. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's great that that is the fact. And, and you sort of hope that, that of those X amount of millions of devices that are sold, some people would, would go on and explore a little bit more and, and, and find some of the things that, that could be happening that could, uh, you know, screw them up a little bit. But, um, yeah, interesting, huh? Yeah. Um, I must say, um, Neil Robinson has put in chat, socially irresponsible to be encouraging gambling, if you ask me. Uh, and totally agree, there are so many adverts for online casinos, online gambling, and then in the same ad break, there might be one for a payday loan, um, encouraging people to gamble, encouraging people to take loans that they can't afford. I mean, the new thing went through this month, didn't it, that said that you can only pay twice what you borrow now, because some people yeah. were borrowing like £400, and it ended up costing them two, four, six thousand with the compound interest, because every month they'd you know, pick it up again. Um, so, you know, I find those adverts objectionable, for sure. Anyway, let's, um, let's crack on. Let's crack on. And uh, keep, your, keep your, uh, your tweets and comments coming, and we'll come back to this uh, during the show. But we'll go on now to this week's edition of MFT with Mr. Dibley. Uh, mm. Do you want to introduce <laughs> it, Gary, or do you want me to just crack on? 
Oh, go on, I've got an apology to make, I think, on, beforehand, then. haven't I? Yeah, I mean, I apologise for this one. Um, I was, uh, I had man flu again over New Year um, and, uh, and and was celebrating the New Year on on the Saturday, really. Um, first time I felt a little bit more human. So on Sunday when I was recording this and just about to head out the door with my daughter, um, you could probably tell um, through the, the entire bit of this, um, I was ever so slightly... Um, out of sorts. <laughs> Let's have a look. Here we go. We are back on the bench. It's uh, 2015. So, uh, happy new everybody, I'm just moving stuff around. Um, I was going to be on the lab today, time is short, I am just about to fly out and uh, I didn't have much time to get anything together. What I am going to look at is very quickly on the e-grip. I've literally just filled the damn thing up and my call's gone. Um, I've been waiting for the RBAs to come out, um, definitely going to get one of those uh, when it comes. No credit for this myself, um, I had a quick scan around and thought you guys might like to see this because apparently you can um, make the Aspire uh, BVCs um, work in said e-grip. Um, now you know you've got two different types, you've got the, uh, sorry not the Aspire BVCs, these are the Aspire BVCs, um, the, the big old boys, uh, and then these are the, if you like, the smaller type. Um, BVC or bottom vertical coil um, atomizers. Um, one of these, apparently, with a little modification, can work in the e grip. Now, I love the BVCs, I love the e grip, um, and apparently, it is a very, very simple mod. Um, what I've got to do firstly is try and I've got to get some tissue, get some tissue, because this might get messy. I've got to take the bleeding ring off to start with because. Um, I've got to release me coil. I've got a little tooly thing somewhere. Now, apologies if you've seen this before, but I was um, I was mightily impressed that you could do this. It saves me having to hang around and, and wait for uh, more coils to be delivered because I have an abundance of the BVCs. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> he says. It's hard doing this cock handed and trying to film it at the same time. Let me just get this uh, top off. Never make it easy, do they? Okay. Now, if you got one of these, you know how they work. Out comes me. Coil! Look at that, no leakage thus far. So I'm just going to give them a little coil a clean. Bear me one second. Now hopefully that's that's visible. I've got my uh, my coil in the end bit there. I'm just going to give that a little clean, and I'm just going to pop that out. Now we need to um, to keep our old coil because apparently it's uh, it's the same screw threading and everything. I'm just going to give that a clean out. I've got some really nutty tobacco juice in there and it, it stinks. Mr. Sutton would love it. Uh, it'd be nice if you could actually see what I was doing, I suppose, wouldn't it? It's a very, very quick mod. We're going to be doing this very quickly today. i just give everything a good clean up while I've got it out. And I've got my uh, me little inserty thing there. Now I'm not sure how close I'm going to be able to get down on the bench but let me just pop one of these um, BBCs out of this packing and I'll see if I can get down a little bit closer without, there we go, I think that's the extent. You can see these two have exactly the same threading. They're pretty much identical in height. The only difference as you can see on the Aspire there is a massive great knob on it. Well, it's not a knob, it's a, it's a negative terminal. So, simple, really, he says, the mod is swapping over the centre pins. Now, I'm going to be mightily impressed if, if this actually does work. With these, you just want to give them a little, a little grip, give them a little wobble, 
pop out your one from your, your Joytech Carter, which I've got here. And I'm just going to get the um, one out of the Aspire. It's a little wiggle, a little pull, some fine nose pliers, and out she pops. And you can see, I don't, you won't be able to see in there, you've got to make sure you trap that um, neg, little neg wire back in as you go. Now apparently, these are quite loose fitting when you pop these back in. As you can see, really, really quite loose, not tight at all. Floppy. So, the tip, when you push this in and it's tightened up against the pin inside, it will actually compress that down and make a decent enough contact. But it's probably worth holding it upright, as I've seen, to screw it together. So literally I'm going to just hold that upright, put me spar in, and just start screwing it down. Now I've got greasy, dirty, greasy, juicy hands. You know, just want to get that. I might need something to get a grip on that with. There's a bit of tissue. Just rip a bit of tissue off just to get a grip on that. Because now I've got it started, I should be able to tighten that up all the way. Like so. Now that's that is tight. I'm just gonna give it a little tighten. Because I can't grip with my fingers, I'm just putting in a little pair of pliers. So I've got there now my BVC with a simple changeover of the uh, of the centre pin with a joytech centre pin and I've got my BVC in my base. I'm going to screw that home. I'm going to keep the pin. I always keep all the pins. I'll put it in my, my spar box. I'm also going to keep my, uh, my joytech at here. I'm going to put that in there as well. You never know. Always worth keeping these things. Never know when they're going to come in handy. Now I've got my, uh, my grip. I'm going to pop that on. And it is just a case of, of now tightening that up and uh, and letting your juice soak. I will pop back in two once it's had a good soak. I'll like say apologies about the um, last minute stuff, but I just want to knit this up tight. The one thing that, that has been said, and I've seen, don't go too mad on the tightness, but apparently this does improve the, the draw. I'll say that when I have a go. Um, you don't want to tighten it up too, too tight. I can't even get the thing to grip. But it does actually leave a very, very small. It's raised ever so slightly. Not massively, just ever so slightly. Now I can I can live with that. I think it's still still stands and all of that sort of stuff. Now I don't know whether this is gonna make me rock a pocket full of juice later because it's not sealed up anything properly or anything like that, but it looks like it's all all in place and all working. I don't know, it's working until I press the button. Let that soak, I'll pop back in two. Right, so we're back, I've had a soak, um, had a little test far, I've got crackle, um, I'm not leaking anywhere, everything seems to be as it should be. Um, now, just to recap, very very quickly, it's not like your your, your big, your bigger spy of BVCs, like the nauseous, like, like this, not for your big nausea, no, I can't even say it, you know what I mean, the big tank. Um, these are like the little mini BVC, something like you'll find in, in this, which I like, which is the uh, the Aspire K1. Um, so the little tiny ones. Um, I know some people get confused. I, my mate Louis, he gets so confused. He ends up ordering the wrong type every time he places an order. Um, little ones. Little ones, not big ones. I'm going to pop my Atty back on the Atty. My tip back on the top. Um give it a little blast. Now I haven't got a clue what this is set at. Um, it's one of the most annoying things. You can never, I can't see what it's set at. But let's give it a go. See if it crackles. Oh bloody hell is that crackling. Hello son. Oh. That's bloody good. Um, 
impressed. Straight away I've got my, uh, my BBC flavour that I like. Um, all of a sudden in a, in a little, uh, my favourite pocket device. That is a nice little trick. If you were the person who, uh, who first came up with that, thank you very much. Um, so a nice little simple mod, we call it a mod. Um, Aspire BBC in the e-grip. And by heck does it improve the flavour. <laughs> <laughs> not saying the Joytech calls were, were bad I got on well with the ones I had um, it was just the fact that it blew and uh, I'm waiting for the RBA I'll, I'll get that when that comes out or it's out but I believe Joytech are getting them in hopefully um, this week I believe I'll be getting definitely getting those but that's a nice nice if you like the BVCs and you got one of these nice little quick tip um, for a uh, a changeover. Simple as changing the middle pin. I can live with that at the bottom. Happy days. Catch you next week where I'll be um, probably uh, back on the lathe. Um, must run. Uh, I've got a kids party to go to. Wow, can't wait. Catch you later. Back to Marco in the studio. <laughs>
40 mod. And uh, now I got this from East Smoke Island um, and uh, Paul Nevin sorted me out rather nicely, I have to say, and got it to me very quickly. Uh, it was 170 euros, which is approximately 150 something pounds um, delivered with a battery. So uh, let's have a look at what you get inside this little box. You open the box and you get your Vapor Shark RDNA 40. And you also get underneath the plastic top there a charging cable, which I've already been using. So it's a USB to micro USB and it's about half a meter long. A couple of feet. A couple of feet long, maybe a foot and a half. Um, plenty big enough anyway for what you need to do. So we'll just put that away for now. And we'll have a look at the beast itself. It has a magnetic sliding side panel. The magnet is on here, just on the top there, and then it connects to the little magnet there, or the metal piece there. It came with an LG 18650 battery. We'll just take that out. There we go. And it's the 18650 LG. And you can see there, it tells you minus and plus. Um, I've seen some sites that have said we will not accept returns if you put your battery in the wrong way. There's no really any way you can do it unless you're really, really drunk or extremely silly um, because there's a big minus and a big plus. So plus, minus, a little ribbon there to take your battery out and it slots in, a little ribbon over the top and then you just slide your, connect, your uh, back plate back on, missing the ribbon, if I just move that out of the way, there we go, slide your back plate back on, and there we have it, the Vapor Shark, it's got a really nice rubberized plastic coating to it, um, and you can see there the fire button, plus and minus, and then the screen at the bottom. You'll also see here, that's the micro USB charging port. Now this has got built-in wireless charging. So if you've got a QI charger that has the right output, you can just drop it straight on and it will charge. I haven't got one of those. Uh, I might have to get myself one. Um, but for the moment, I've just been either plugging it in or whacking in another battery that I've charged. Uh, I have to say, it lasts some time. Um, which is rather good. Now, there's no kind of on-off feature. What there is, is a five-click um, lock and five-click unlock feature. Um, and when it's not in use, it just goes to sleep. And when you press your button again, it'll come up with Evolve DNA 40 on the screen. Let me zoom in on the screen a little bit for you. And there you can see. Now, there's various different things you can do with this device uh, once you've clicked the fire button. Um, five clicks unlocks it and five clicks locks it again. Now if you want to use the temperature control system that you can uh, use with the DNA40 you need to use some NI200 wire uh, and I've built a few cores with that already and we'll come on to that very shortly. Um, but to enter the temperature control mode once you've clicked five times and you've locked your device, you hold down plus and minus together until it goes into temperature control mode. And there we are. We're now in temperature control mode. And we can change this from 600 degrees to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you go past 600, it turns temperature control off. Now, if we go down to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll do it a little bit quicker for you. Da, 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 da. Once we hit 200, once we go past 200, it will change to centigrade. And it goes from 230 centigrade down to 100, I believe. I'll just go down. So 100, you go past 100, and it clicks back into Fahrenheit. So it's up to you if you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius. Once you've hit the temperature that you uh, want to vape at, you just press your fire button 
and it's stored. And I think it timed out on me, so I'll just do that again. So we'll change it to 46, 470, hit fire, and that is now stored. The other things you can do, in the lock mode, if you hold the fire button and the plus button, it will change the screen orientation. So at the minute it's in the right hand mode. So fire and plus, keep it held down, it will change into left mode. There you go. So now you're seeing the screen backwards. And we'll do that again. Turn it round into right mode. And there we go. The screen's now the other way around. The other thing you can do is switch between normal and stealth mode. Now, stealth mode, the screen does not come on. So if you press your fire button and minus while you're in lock, it says stealth mode and then the screen is not on. It will come on very briefly to tell you it's locked. But what, once you've pressed it five times, you can vape, but nothing happens. So press five times again. It's now locked and then hold down the fire and the minus and it will change into normal mode again. And there we go, back into normal mode. Let's put a device on the top. Now, before we do that, let me just say, before we, before we do that, if, you're, if you look here where the 510 connection is, there's some scuff marks already and that happened within 20 minutes of me getting this. Um, when you put a device on, it scuffs the top. That's a really big fail, I'm afraid, um, by VaporShark. They should have put a metal, completely metal surround here. So, yes, it might have scratched a little bit, but it wasn't going to wear away the paint. Um, so what I have been doing is I've been using a, uh, a variable airflow connection on it. And that's so every time I take a device on and put it off again, it's not going to damage it. It's not ideal though, I have to say. So I'll screw that on and then change the airflow. So I've got that fitted on there now. And what I have here is a uh, an Atty, and I've taped over with some surgical tape um, some of the air holes because it was a little bit too airy for me. So here we are, I've got the Atty on the top, uh, and I've just changed the settings you'll see there. I've set it at 25 watts. It's got a 0.13 ohm resistance coil. It's actually a dual coil in there. Uh, and it's set at 470 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what will happen is, if the temperature reaches 470 degrees Fahrenheit, it will cut out and it will change the voltage or the wattage um, to maintain that temperature for you. If you don't go anywhere near that temperature, then nothing will cut out. So if I show you, it's difficult to show you at the same time as uh, vaping on it. But you can see there that the temperature is changing and it will get to the temperature you've set it at and then cut itself off or change the voltage applied to keep that temperature maintained. And it vapes. Lovely. Um, and I'll just take off the top section for you. Now you can see it's looking a bit dark in there and that's not the coil or the um, wick burning, it's just the colour of the liquid, um, which is a uh, black cherry and chocolate. You see there. There's no glowing, there's no super, super glowing coils um, because the temperature control is not letting the coils get that hot. So we'll take this off and I'll tell you about something else. Dave looked at the Kanga sub tank on his show uh, and I bought one before Christmas uh, and here is the beast. It is massive. Very large indeed, it really is. Uh, let me just zoom in for you a little bit. There we go. 
Uh, now, the beauty of this is it's not just a, a tank with an atomizer, it's also a rebuildable. Um, and it was so good, I have to say, that I purchased another one. So I've got two. Uh, and what I thought I would do is show you how to make it into a rebuildable. So let's uh, open this up. So you get your tank already with a coil in. You get a little baggie with a screwdriver and two coils. You get some organic Japanese cotton for wicking. You get a little beautification ring and that will fit a smaller device because it is quite a wide device. So I'll make it look a little bit different. Now you also get a different insert for the top. You get your RBA which fits in the the unit and you get another coil. Now I have to say the first one was £30 and then I believe it was Boxing Day possibly I saw a post uh, and UK E6 store was selling them at £19. Uh, I'm not sure if that's still the case um, but hence I jumped all over that and bought another one. So it's dead easy to change the coils. You just screw the uh, bottom section out like so. It's stainless steel and Pyrex so there's no issues with any juices that react with polycarbonate. Um, this is a 0.5 ohm coil and it is massive. Look at the size of it. Absolutely huge and Dave uh, was also astounded at the size of this Atti. Um, and it's got three wraps of wire in there. It's very difficult to see inside. You might be able to. Um, I have seen these rebuilt, so I'll have a go at one point, at some point. Um, and you can just change them over. And this one is a 1.2 ohm. And you just screw it in. Now to change it into an RBA, you simply insert the rebuildable section like so. There's the chimney that comes off and it comes pre-coiled. Here we go, it comes pre-coiled but not pre-wicked. Now we'll just look at the resistance and I don't know what I'll do. I'll put this on the uh, beautification ringy thing. Here we go and we'll put that on the Vapor Shark without the airflow adapter as well on it. And you'll see the size. There we go. And that is coming up at 0.75 ohms. You'll see on there 0.75 ohms. Now they use Canthal for the coil so you can't use temperature control. Um, but you have everything you need there in order to have a, an, the RBA. So you put your wick in, put your bottom section on, put your chimney on, and then the other thing you need to do is to just remove your drip tip and replace this section with this section. So we'll have a go at that, why not? And while I'm at it, I will just get from the other box the deck that I've built using the temperature control NI200 wire. Because I've built that, I just haven't wicked it up yet. So I'll just get that. And what I thought I'd do is have one set up just au natural, as nature intended, uh, or as Kanga intended, and then another setup which I can use the temperature control on, because uh, then I've got more choice. So, here we go. 
we take our little baggie and our little screwdriver. And these screws are tiny. They are very tiny. And I wonder how many times it would take to knacker the threads on these. But because I'm using one as an RBA all the time, I don't think that's going to be an issue. So, we'll just put the screws back in their little holes. And you'll see, before I do that, you'll see the difference. It's a much longer tube on the regular one than goes into the RBA. It's also a lot thicker than the RBA one. But you'll see that that will fit in like this when the glass is on. So, we'll just put one screw in there, like so. Use one screw hole to line it up. And it's taken me longer than it would take you, because I'm obviously showing you. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be a lot quicker. And if you haven't got as big a fingers as me, it will also be easy. I did notice on the screws there, there's some kind of screw lock gunk. Um, so I wouldn't tight these, tighten these up too tight if I were you. Right, so there you go. We're ready to rock and roll and fill with juice. Um, once you've done your coiling. Now the difference is when it's in RBA mode, you only get about four, 4.2 mils capacity because this is chunky. If you look at the difference between the RBA deck uh, and the normal atty that goes in there, there's obviously a, a big size difference, so you're going to get less juice. It's about five and a half, six mils with that in, uh, and it's about four, 4.2 mils with the RBA in. So let me just put it on the device and I'll show you what the resistance is. And this is using the NI200 wire. Yes, you'll have to wait till the, after the ads for that. <laughs> I have to say, um, it is an absolute cracking device. And what I didn't show you in that VT is if you hold down the plus and minus, um, just in normal mode, it will lock the um, power setting. So five clicks to lock the fire button and then press and hold the plus and minus and it locks the power setting so it doesn't jiggle about in your pocket. Um, anyway, that being said, Let's go to the ads and uh, we'll get the final bit in uh, part three. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Vapors, do you love discovering new e-liquids? Tell Dripper the types of flavours you like and they'll send you five gourmet juices each month. Experience new and exclusive flavours, all with a money-back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe. Dripper.co.uk
and now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. And we are back in the room. Yes, um, and I have to say, just looking at chat there, um, on the stock 0.5, it's really all the air holes open and uh, lung hit it and you'll get just tons of vapour. Um, I haven't been doing that because I put some 24 in there for some strange reason. This is um, spearmint caramel that I made last week um, and it's only 12. Um, but... Uh, it is nice and I've been pushing it out during the ads because if I did it now all well, my green screen stuff would go crazy. Anyway, um, let's go to the second part and you'll see the rest of it. See you in a minute. Fan and resistance there is 0.42 ohms, um, which is reasonably low. It's not as low as it can go uh, and that's using 14 wraps of the NI200 in a single coil. Uh, let me just take off the, the top section for you and you will see that a bit better. And there we go. There is my coil front and centre right above the air hole on the device on the deck. Now I have to say the NI200 wire is not as forgiving as uh, say cancel. Cancel you can muck about with, you can heat it up and make little micro coils and squeeze it and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that with the NI200, it's simply not strong enough. Um, so you need to be careful when you're, when you're doing this um, because you can very easily pull your coil out of shape, which I already have done. You can see, just installing it, I've just kind of taking it out of shape a little bit so I'm being really careful with it. So that's one coil um, and I've used a drill bit. Uh, where's my drill bit? Let me just show you what size drill bit that was if I can. Bear with. <laughs> That's an in-house very Patrols TV joke. Um, the guys will understand. Here we go. I've used it, uh, used that drill bit um, to coil it up, which is what is that? It's about a three mil, three mil um, drill bit. That's what I've used. Fourteen wraps um, on that, uh, and that gives me 0.42 ohms. So what I have is some. Uh, Japanese cotton. It's not the one that came in the kit. I've already got some, so I thought I'd use this. Uh, and I will just slice them off. Let's just slice off a chunk. Now, the, the organic Japanese cotton isn't all that cheap, I have to say, but it will last you quite a while. Because we're not going to use all of that. We're only going to use half of that, I would say. Um, so, Half be enough, yeah. So I'm going to just cut that in half again. And there's two wicks there, easily two wicks. So it does last a long time. Now then, what we need to do is get this through that coil without um, distorting the coil too much. So let me just finagle this off camera very slightly. I'm just going to wet the end slightly. You need a wet end. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to start pushing that through my coil. And what I'm going to do is just hold on to the coil as I tease that wick through. Because I don't want it to, to distort too much. And as you can see, it's trying to. It's trying to really distort but I don't want it to. So there you go, it might just finagle that coil a little bit now. 
like I said, this wire is not forgiving when it comes to being bent around. So, there we go. There we have it. Let me just check that the resistance is okay. And it's asking me if I've put a new coil on because I've moved it uh, and I want the same coil so I'm going to press the down button. Uh, and it's telling me still, yeah, it's 4.2 ohms. So, it's all good. Now I just need to trim my wick, and I'm going to trim it kind of to the edge of this deck. So go in there, trim it there, about that, and the same the other side. There we go. And then what we need to do is just fold that up and put the section back on. It goes on there like that. Before I do that, let me just take it off again. You'll see on here, that's the juice channels here, just on the side. Um, so we need to make sure that we're getting our wick in a position that it's going to suck that juice up. So what I'm doing now is just finagling this down into those juice channels and I'm just going to add a little bit more that I've cut off just down the sides touching the touching the wick so that will really increase the flow Now we've got this set at 470 degrees, so I'm not going to show you the fact that it won't give you a dry burn, um, because at 470 degrees it, it will burn the cotton. Um, there we go, get into shot. So we'll just put uh, a little bit of juice on. And this is some dark chocolate and cherry uh, that I made up last week, uh, about 10 milligrams um nicotine strength because obviously when you're going down as low as half an ohm and lower um you're going to get all the flavor um but you're going to get such a huge hit so i've decided i'm just going to try some lower strength juice and we'll give that a bit of a fire and we see there beautiful and that is at 20 watts there we go <laughs> it's uh kicking out some vapor so we'll put the chimney back on, put this section back on. God, that smells nice. <laughs> oh, nice, smelly vision. Uh, that, that dark chocolate cherry smells really nice. Um, and I'm just trying to do this so I don't cross thread it at the same time as keeping it in shot, which is not easy, I have to say. Right, so chimney is going on. Check everything is okay, yeah. There we go. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to fill the tank. And you're only gonna be able to fill to the top line, or to where your tube is, really. Um, and that may not seem a lot, um, but like I said, it's about four mils, 4.2 mils, something like that. Um, and if you have something like a needle tip like this, which is quite small, <laughs> then it might take you some time to fill it up. Um, and we're almost there. We're about two thirds there. You can see there, slowly getting there. This is a test juice that I've made, so I only made 10 mils of it. Um, I quite like it, so I'll, what I'll do is probably make 30 mils at a time. I don't mind, like making it in too big a batch. Right, so that is almost to the line. Um, I won't tip it so you can see it, but it's almost to the line. So now um, I'll just take this off the deck for now. 
not forgetting I've got the beautification ring on the R DNA 40 so it's coming off that as opposed to the device um, and I just want to put that down a second there we go just make sure everything's tight on there and then we'll insert that into the device and screw it in home and that's just hand tight and you can see there how much juice is in but when I turn it round it looks full <laughs> so there you go now that should be wicking its way through as we speak so we'll put it back on the uh, RDNA and there is the beast yes now the drip tip that comes with it is quite nice styles well with the rest of the uh, device uh, and the air holes you can change um, from three to two to one um, and I found that um, I rather like it about half half one hole closed um, and it's difficult doing this on camera without turning it around there we go so you can see there goes from three to two to one uh, and I like it about half of one is good for me so we've got it at 20 watts at uh, and I've set that at 470 I'm just going to change that down a little bit I want to start at 400 so I've set that to 400 degrees click so now we're at 042 ohms 20 watts and it's going to go to 400 degrees and you can see there it's been some nice bubbles where it's been wicking and that my friends is a lot of vapor a hell of a lot of vapor Wow, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is lovely, I have to say. Uh, and that's the first time I've used it in the RDA mode because I'd already started using it in the stock mode uh, and this only arrived this morning. However, I'd set the wick up, uh, I set the coil up in the other device, um, but just not fitted it to the entire device. So there you go. Let's, um, let's go back to the studio uh, and um, we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. I say a little bit more detail, but we haven't got a lot of time left. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about that, Gary? It was good. Yes, learning. I got mine today, didn't I? So uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give me chimney a go. Yeah, do it. Do it. Um, I have to say, the, um, the RBA mode, uh, it kicks the preferable ass it really does mm. um and i've got kind of a 85 percent vg juice in here um and it's a bit like vaping toothpaste but i like it i like it a lot <laughs> um i'll probably get maybe another one i don't know so i can have just different juices in it and uh i'm definitely going to be getting another rda uh, another dna 40 mod of some type i have to say needs to be done um because um i'm loving the temperature control but like i said the uh NIT 100 wire is quite um, can be quite difficult. Um, you can get it out of shape quite easily, I have to say. So that's about it for tonight, Gary. What have you got on next week in the uh, in the shed? Uh, we'll probably be back on the lathe again. Yes, I've I've got uh, I'm I'm so I've got to say sorry to Bob. I'm I've definitely finishing your box this weekend, sir. But I'll be on the lathe. There you go. <laughs> He's going to finish Bob's mod and uh, he's going to be on the lathe. Don't forget this weekend there is all sorts of shenanigans going on around the country at uh, BBC sites and some ITV sites as well. Check the Facebook pages and uh, get down there. I will do my best to get to one as well. Um, don't forget tomorrow night you've got Matt with The Cave and then on Thursday Dave Dawn and Keith with his pocket is back um, for the Haze Hour. Sunday Dave Kitson is back for Dave's Tackle Box. And then Monday, of course, the boys are back for drips and tips. 
And of course, don't forget every blooming night of the week, you can go over to our Y4 radio link going into chat very, very shortly. So until next week, my friends, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been uh, it's been good as it normally is. Isn't that right, Mr. Dibley? Very good. Yes. So yes. we'll catch you next week. <laughs> we will. We will see you next week. Ta-ta. Proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids.